friends, I am Beth Bridges. I'm known as the networking motivator because I once attended 2,500, yeah, 2,500 networking events in person in a 10 year span. I'm here with Keith Andrew on the Keith Andrew Network because I've known Keith for I think seven or eight years. And we connected because he's a network and I'm a networker and that was a good fit. And Keith has just stayed in contact, stayed connected for all these years. And we've done several little projects and events together. And really that truly is a big part of networking. So thank you so much, Keith. Thank you for having me on once again for a super awesome special episode of the Keith Andrew Network. No, absolutely. I wanted to do something fun with our audience and you came up with this great idea and it's, I like to give people opportunities. So what lessons did you want to talk about? Yeah, so, so what you have done, Keith, is you have um, not only built a network just, just simply by reaching out to people. And I remember the story of how you got started. You, you really just wanted to talk to interesting people who were in industries and doing things that you personally were interested in. And that's a perfectly good reason to reach out to someone is that that you're a fan or that you're interested in what they're doing. And really, and I don't know if you you realize this, what you've really done and when someone does what you've done, you, you tend to um, create yourself as an expert in kind of that industry simply by talking to people who are in the industry. No, I agree. You know, I always want to start off and pat myself on the back, <laughs> but I want you to should. start off. You should. No, I agree. And I want to, for our listeners, want to know what is the Key Fancy Network? Is, as I mentioned, you know, I do want to invite you to a show on June 10th. At five o'clock, it's gonna be my eight year anniversary. It's gonna be a special episode. And for people who want to know what's the message for the Keep Angie Network, whole point of my talk show is to show people that even with having a learning disability, I can still amount to something. And at the same time, I'm able to turn myself and just roll crease in a stupid shirt, but whatever, no one's perfect, right? <laughs> Anyway, the whole point of my talk show is to show people that even with having a learning disability, I can still amount to something. And at the same time, I'm able to turn myself into an example for people out there dealing with any types of learning disabilities and disabilities to never give up and prove people wrong. Prove to them that labels do not dictate who you are and who you're going to be. It's a prove to them it can stem out to something. But I do want to clarify, I, I guess I had a dollar for every time I had to clarify myself. You do not have to have a learning disability to be on my talk show. As I mentioned with disabilities, I'm talking about myself and how I'm turning myself into an example. By having people on the show, you're supporting the message, you're supporting my cause, and you're making a new friend with that. And as I said, Wink, wink, you do not have to have a disability. You know, there's a lot of people where I would introduce myself to in their way. And one of my favorite wrestlers, Amy DeMont, and I'm like, hey, you know, it's an honor to meet you. I would love to have you on the show. And she looks at me and says, I feel like your show is only for people with disabilities. Oh. And I'm like, okay, well, let me rephrase that because she's not the first one to say that to me. There's other people too. It's like, isn't your show about people with disabilities? Aren't you, you know, just interviewing people with disabilities? I'm like, no, I'm talking about myself. You know, it's funny <laughs> in a bizarre kind of way. I want to have more gothic girls on the show. I find the whole gothic thing very interesting. And they always say to me, how the hell do you know I have a learning disability? I don't know, so thanks for telling me. <laughs> it's really nice for you to tell me that you have a disability, but I was talking about myself. But I know a lot of people are like, oh, you should take that out of the message. A lot of people, you should leave it in the message. And I'm like, I, if you oh, go ahead. I, you know what? I just had an idea too. 
um, you, you could add in there um, because everybody has challenges. They may not have a quote learning disability, but everybody has challenges. I have had some challenges myself in the last few years. And, and maybe you can refine it to say that you interview people who've overcome challenges, which is really your learning disability has been simply a challenge to you. It, it hasn't been an excuse to you. It hasn't been a, 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 a discouraging to you. It's simply been a challenge that you have overcome and are continuing to overcome and everybody has challenges. And maybe that's part of the message, the marketing message that can help people see themselves more appropriately for the show. It, you know, I, I think maybe they're not listening a little bit because it's clear to me that your message was that you have a, a challenge and that, you know, you've gotten over the years, negative feedback from people. Oh, you can't do this. You can't do that. Um, but uh, here's one of the other things that I admire tremendously about you is that you have persistence. And there are plenty of people who don't have learning disabilities who are su smart, supposedly, who give up pretty easily. And uh, persistence is far by far one of the most important traits that you can have and you have it and and I admire that. Oh, I agree and I say thank you very much for that and you know I would love to have Amy DeMond on the show I'm not saying anything bad about her I have a lot of love and respect for her she was one of the women that I grew up watching and got me back into professional wrestling and uh, long story short my family got into wrestling you know Hulk Hogan, Randy Savage they have lost interest. Take your birds, take your vitamins. <laughs> <laughs> brother. <laughs> brother, that's right. And then I'll rest me at 10. My brother, Matthew, came across it. And then we were hooked. Uh, after Owen Hart passed away in a horrible accident, I lost interest. And I, oh. I wasn't a big fan of the Attitude Era. I hated the Attitude Era. You know, I mean, yeah, it's nice to hit someone with a chair and it does you blood once in a while. But after a while, it's kind of like I miss the old days. And that's where I got out of it. Then I came across two beautiful women. Thank God for women. <laughs> yeah, two beautiful women, uh, Trish Stratus and Alita. And it's because of them, I got back into wrestling. And then I got interested in my whole house is here. You know, there's Chris Jericho and Chris Benoit. And there's so many great wrestlers. I'm like, okay, but because they got me interested and in back into it, that's why I'm still a fan of today. Now, of course, you know, it's everything that dies down, you lose interest. I'm like, oh, who are these people? And hands down, the women of today wrestling, of today's world, best professional masses you could ever see, they will blow you away. Mm. And it's completely amazing how far women's wrestling came but i'm not gonna tell you know like an asshole or yeah. being sexist. Well, i don't i don't know a lot about wrestling but you know it's interesting i wonder if um ronda rousey had something to do with that not just when she she joined wrestling but um uh her mma career i wonder if that really helped uh women's wrestling re-enter the spotlight or even because I think I think she um raised the bar in well she she set the bar to begin with because nobody was doing it and then really it, instead of uh women's MMA slowly growing it went <sighs> and I think she made all the other competitors immediately faster rapid more rapidly uh improve their game so I I hope that I hope that uh, sport that genre never forgets the impact she had on it. And, and it's just interesting. It makes me wonder if she's had it, you know, an impact on, on, uh, wrestling. Honest, entertainment I, wrestling. Is that, is that the way you would maybe put it? Entertainment wrestling? Well, to be honest, I'm not really a fan of Emma. Okay. I like mixed muscle arts. And when I think about it, I'm a big, I'm a diehard fan of Dragon Ball Z. You know, I, I always joke around and say, wouldn't it be nice if we had a competition of wrestlers, martial artists, boxers have a giant ring, and at the end, you will be known as the strongest fighter on planet Earth. 
that'd be so good. That'd be so cool. But there's still things like something about fighting in a cage is kind of like degrading. But I'm not a fan of UFC. But yeah, you know, Ronda Rousey. Yeah. Uh, that's know. how it started out, by the way. UFC started out with with one guy saying, hey, my style is the best. And and they had it, it when it first started out, the first few episodes were just uh, it'd be a, a, a hard style karate black belt and then a kung fu fighter and then a, a, a sumo wrestler. And, it, you know, it was just every different style you could you could think of. And so that was that was pretty interesting. Of course, now they're all very similar styles because it's, you know, mixed martial arts has kind of become its own style. When you take enough different things and mush them all together for long enough, it becomes its own distinct style. But back in the beginning, it was it was very, very different. It was, if you can't, can't tell, I watched it from the beginning and it was fascinating to, to see how you, you'd have these two extremely different styles and, you know, what's, what's going to happen. It was very unpredictable. No, I agree with you. You know, it's funny. Um, you know, back in 2003, when they did tribute to the troops, WWE would go overseas. I didn't know that MMA and UFC actually did the same thing. Oh, oh, interesting. I did not know that either. That is very interesting. So, hey, well, let's let's talk about networking just really super quickly. Because because I have a I have a funny line that I that I I made up that I want to share with you. So, you know, we all went home and we all worked from home during COVID and we all just wore our sweatpants and, you know, t-shirts and, or we just put on a nice shirt and then, you know, sat there in our, our shorts. But I want you to know, I wear my fancy pants every day. I got fancy pants on They're they're They got little cuffs and they're all very fancy. And, um, I did that even when I was working from home for the most part, just because it made me feel more businesslike. And it made me feel when I connected with somebody like this, that it wasn't just, um, that it was more serious. And um, I know with your network, you interview all kinds of people from around the world, have have you seen a change while you were doing this during COVID, or did the people you were talking to still um, were they still doing the kind of things that they were doing before when you were interviewing them before COVID? That was a long question. Did it make sense? <laughs> yes, it did. You know, okay. I give an example. I for me anyway, I started. If you watch season one, season two. Back in 2013, I don't know. Okay, I know Zoom was around. I think it was. I'm not really sure. I know Skype was around, but there was no Skype recorder. So looking back at season one and two, I'm like, you know what? I should have maybe waited because, you know, yeah, 13 is a good number. But maybe waited to the video kind of got better. And get, instead of recording it directly from the phone camera to the phone, instead of do it better. Now you should see from 2013 up to now, my video quality has gotten better. I got more comfortable. Of course, you know, most of the people, I'm going to get some wonderful guests. I'm going to get some guests where I was, I didn't talk to or who are, you know, whatever. But, but there's not, uh, I give you an example. There's just some handful of people like, I'm so happy I met this person. And there's other ones who are like, why did I do that? <laughs> but there's other ones like I like giving people an opportunity, yeah. but you don't really know how that person is going to accept the opportunity or if they're going to take it seriously, but I hope they mm. do, or if they're yeah. going to uh, abuse it. So somebody that, that's the point, taking it seriously, taking the conversation seriously, um, and taking your time seriously and my time seriously, right? Because we're we're busy people. We're carving out time. And if we don't take it seriously, maybe subconsciously, that's what I was doing. Making sure that I was taking my work time, whether it was from home or in a little office, taking it seriously. And to me, taking it seriously means, you know, um, fancy pants, <laughs> fancy pants and, you know, accessories and, uh, you know, brushing my hair and all that stuff. So, 
that that's really interesting that you say, you know, taking it seriously. But I, I think that's I think that is I think that is the key phrase. And you know what, too? That you take this seriously. And and um, even though it started out as, you know, something you were doing because of an interest that you had, you, you take it seriously, which means you approach it professionally. You're always learning. And, you know, um, what else is interesting? You said maybe you should have waited until the technology, but no, start when you, you start when you start and you 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 work with what you have at the time and then you just improve as you go along. I remember the first the first interview that we did was Skype, but I didn't know how you recorded it. It was done by uh, Ecam, it's E C A M M, and I think I paid about thirty nine dollars for it, and it was good. You know, I used it from two thousand and fifteen all the way up to about twenty twenty, and of course, oh, wow. they, they didn't update the service. Uh, because when you update your computer, it may not go with the software. So I'm like, okay, I need something else. And I came across Zoom, and my brother said that you have to pay for Zoom to do virtual background. But luckily, knock on wood, you know, 40 minutes of free time, I get to do this. I've been playing with the idea of going live, but I don't know if that would make a difference. But, you know, it's... There's, there's a lot of things. Maybe I'll go live. I've been playing with the different formats to go back to just, you know, being uncensored. And people see what they want. But at the same time, you know, now I'm on, you know, Manhattan neighborhood of broadcasting. I should just keep it as it is, PG, PG-13. Yes, it is still uncensored. You have the right to say whatever you want, but to a certain extent. So it's like PG, PG-13, I yeah. 14 you know, there's a lot of people where you watch the interviews, like, did he really say that or did she really say that? And I'm like, well, that's not on me, but that's on you. Uh, but it's, I want to do this to the day I'm six feet under. You know, I'm not saying that to be cute. I'm not saying that to be funny. I want to do this until the day I die. And I found something that really gives me joy and makes me happy. And you know, my parents in the beginning were kind of skeptical, which I, it's not going to work out. But eight years later, you know, my mom's very supportive. My dad's supportive. He doesn't think it's a real thing because I'm not making money. But if it makes me happy, then whatever. If it makes him happy, as long as no one shows up at the door, he doesn't really, really care. Uh, but um, I'm just tired of pleasing people to say, Hey, look what I'm doing. You're going, what your experience and what your hard work speak for itself. Stop looking for approval and just say, if you're capable of doing it, then shut up and go and do it. And people will appreciate your hard work. If you stop and say, hey, I just did this today. I just did that. What do you think? You're only going to set yourself up for failure. It's a lot of wisdom. That is a lot of wisdom. And, and it's a good reminder to, to all of us. And, and the additional lesson that I would add on to that is that you are the, the people that you interview because they've gone through challenges because they've persisted, um, you know, because they're pursuing something that, you know, maybe, maybe, everybody doesn't appreciate uh wrestling everybody doesn't appreciate that that is a, a a sport or a type of entertainment but 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 the people who do appreciate it the the audience that they have they they love that audience and they like you are not trying to please everybody and i think you, you know you don't want to go around trying to make everybody else unhappy but certainly if you if you focus on pleasing the audience or or relating to the audience that you want to attract then then that means some other people are just not going to get it and that's fine and and really in in networking it you know that 
that's kind of a similar thing. You you tend to attract the people who have the same goals and the values as you do. And, and it's a it's a circle. So you attract the kind of people who have the same goals and values that you do. And because you spend time with those people, it reinforces those same goals and values, which attracts more of the people with those, which reinforces it. And so you can really, you can really handcraft yourself and the way you operate by choosing to spend time with the kind of people who have those same qualities. So, so you can craft your own life. You can craft your own personality to a great extent, simply by the people you choose to associate with and spend time with. And if you choose to associate with people who, yeah, they have challenges, but they still, they still do the things if they are pursuing what they love and and they're passionate and enthusiastic about it, then you too will be able to work through challenges and you too will be able to, you know, be enthusiastic and be um, happy with what you do every day. No, I agree. You know, for my network, you know, it isn't just, a lot of people are like, well, what do you expect from it? What do you want from it? And I just started off with a talk show. I'm like, okay. But then I've been watching WWE and how they have thousands of hours of other networks and the content. I'm like, okay, why not? I can do the same. Now I have H.B. Gibson, the home of the X Zone, wife of a fighter for people who are on it, you know, work out and be interested in eating healthy. I have the Dumbo voiceovers. I have the, the Jumbo Book Challenge. I have the Human Pyramid Challenge. I have uh, my brand ambassadors. I have uh, people who I worked with, um, professional wrestlers. I have the best of Raven, Chris Harris, uh, some cartoon characters that I like, you know, Goku of Dragon Ball and Bardock. So it's a little of everything to say, hey, it isn't just pinpoint blank of talking out of my butt about this saying it's about disabilities, but look at what other side projects but yeah. I have too who get you interested. Absolutely. I did not know you had all those different things. See what happens? You start you start spinning off and, and adding new things. So but the biggest challenge nice. is and, and I know we can talk about this off the air is connecting with your audience. And that's the biggest challenge. But well, here's a question for you. And I'll just, just your time and your show, but I want to ask you one question. How do you connect with your audience? One of the most important ways to connect with people is if you want to stay connected with them, it's to make a better connection in the first place. And one of the absolute best ways to make an excellent connection is to find out what you have in common with them. If that's the whole purpose of the first conversation you have with someone is try to figure out what you have in common and, and the more specific the thing you have in common. So um, you and I don't have wrestling in common. I don't know much about it, but we both have a great interest in reaching people and sharing our messages and uh, being online and leveraging digital platforms and so that is a good place to start. Now, if it turned out that, you know, we had a, a, a sports team in common or we both used some sort of um, uncommon platform, like we we're both huge fans of whatever platform it was, that's, that's a good place to start too. So for anyone, whether they want to do what you're doing, whether they're in business, whether they're just looking to, you know, build friendships, that first conversation, those first few conversations, what do you have in common? Try to figure that out and you'll go very far. That, that is one of my absolute best pieces of advice. And, you know, you don't want to do it by doing 30 questions with someone, right? 21 questions. Well, do you like football? No. Do you like soccer? No. Do you like, you know, you kind of, you kind of build some conversational skills that let, let things um, uh, unfold and uh, I'll tell you a great way to do that is to just tell stories. 
So I might tell you a story of, um, uh, I, this is a true story, Keith. I'm very pleased today because last night I did my first uh, real track workout in almost a year. I'm a runner and I run track and I did my first real track workout in almost a year and I can actually still run. Wow. So you might say, oh, that's interesting. I don't run or I used to run, but it hurt my knee. Or you might say, oh, well, that's really interesting. And then you tell me a different story. Well, I know we don't have running in common. But I'm going to listen real carefully to the next story you tell me to see if you tell me, oh, you know, I don't run. But what I love to do is hike. And, you know, here in, in New York State, we have all these nobody knows we have all these amazing parks and we have this wonderful countryside. And then and then I might say, ha, huh, I love New York. I love New York City. My mom and I have traveled to New York. You, you see how it just you keep building until we find something that that we have in common. And then the conversation just takes care of itself. Well, I agree with you 100 percent. Was there anything else you wanted to ask me or? That I think is just, you know, now that I think about it, that is just one of the best pieces of advice I can give. And, and I think that's why you have built your network, both your TV network, you know, your, your broadcasting network, but also your network of people, you know, cause I've been to some of your, your annual events and your Christmas parties. And I'm kind of blown away by the people, you know, by the way, <laughs> a little, a little, um, it, it's one of those things where I sat there thinking if I really followed this sport, I would be a little bit fangirl awestruck here because you have some amazing people. And it's because you found what you have in common, which is a love for the sport. And they're in the sport. They obviously love it. And you're a fan of the sport. You know, that's something that somebody could connect on as well. So it's a, it's a very, that's a very clever, um, very well thought out, very, um, it is a very good deep strategy right there that is also enjoyable. So I, I, I have always admired that in you uh, as long, as well as your persistence and just sticking to it, you know, a problem to you is not a problem. It's just that, okay, let's figure this out. Your connections and your friendships are more vital to your health than almost anything else in your life. And so uh, here in mid April, 2021, if you haven't started reaching out to your friends, if, you know, even if it's six feet apart with masks on, whatever you're comfortable with, get out there and reconnect with your friends. I think that is probably one of the best things you can do for yourself and your health and your enthusiasm in your life and for them. And so as the networking motivator, I'm, I'm urging you to do that. Call somebody today who you haven't talked to in a while. In fact, I have a piece of paper over here with the name of a woman I haven't talked to in a while, and 